Perform ACDC analysis for the common emitter amplifier and ultimately find the amplification of the circuit. So you may be wondering, why do we consider this a common emitter amplifier and not a common emitter amplifier with the generation? Well, we can see here that on the emitter here, let's label it base collector emitter, you can see that there's a resistor here, which is what you would consider to be degeneration. However, you can see that there's this capacitor here connected in parallel, and we know that in AC conditions, capacitor is short, right? So effectively, it is shorting down to ground with the emitter from here. Therefore, it's essentially the same exact thing as a common emitter amplifier. The reason why we put capacitors is for different frequency ranges, you will have poles, but we don't have to worry about that in this case. All we need to do is analyze the circuit. So the first thing we need to do is observe the DC characteristics. Under DC conditions, we know that capacitors are open. So we can say caps open. This means that everything to the left of this capacitor is not even connected to the main part of the circuit, so you don't even need to consider this. So let's see what we have before the base. We have a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 30 kilo ohm resistor. That's about it. However, unlike the previous video, which I just tagged above, we now have two resistors as biasing. This will change the process and make it slightly longer. So what we need to do is again rotate this 30 kilo ohm resistor counterclockwise 90 degrees with the 20 volt source such as this 20 volts. We have our 30 kilo ohm resistor, but now we have to consider our 10 kilo ohm resistor going to ground. This will affect the KVL loop that we will take eventually. And of course, you know, you're going to have the collector, but we don't need to worry about that yet. So now what we have to do is make a Thevenin equivalent resistance and Thevenin equivalent voltage source to effectively combine both these resistors into one equivalent resistor. So we can do the same process as we did before. So for V Thevenin, all we have to do is the voltage division across the 10 kilo ohm resistor. We know this because this potential here is what will eventually be amplified, not what is across the 30 kilo ohm resistor. So we do 10 kilo ohms over 10 kilo ohms plus 30 kilo ohms, just like in normal voltage division, times the original voltage source, 20 volts, which will yield you 5 volts. Now for our Thevenin, all you have to do is take the 30 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with the 10 kilo ohm. They're essentially parallel because in AC conditions, this voltage source is not varying, therefore it's considered to be ground, and if both of these are ground, and this potential is the same across both, they're essentially in parallel. So let's just take 30 kilo ohms in parallel with 10 kilo ohms. And this gives you 7.5 kilo ohms. Using these new values, we can create the proper KVL loop. So now we have our five volts again, and we can use our R Thevenin of seven 0.5 kilo ohms. Attaching the transistor now. Again, we don't really need to look at what's above the collector. You could use another formula, but this way is easier. And we have our resistor going to ground, 1 kilo ohm. Again, we don't need to worry about the capacitor since we're in DC conditions, it's open. So now we can take our KVL loop, which is nice. So 5 volts equals 7.5 kilo ohms times base current IB. You can change the I to be capped or lowercase. I use them interchangeably. Plus, you have to keep in mind the 0 0.7 voltage drop, just like across a diode. 0 0.7 volts. Plus, now we have an extra term here. 1 kilo ohm resistor times IE, or the current going through the emitter. This is a little different since we don't want two variables with one equation. We want just one variable, one equation, so we can solve for it. Fortunately, we do have an equivalent formula for IE. We know that IE equals beta plus one times IB.
If you're wondering, oh, wait, isn't it beta IB? That's the collector. The collector and emitter have roughly the same current, but sometimes that plus one may make a difference in the long run. So now we gotta put over here beta plus one times IB. And now we have one variable. Evaluating this further, we uh, subtract 0 0.7 volts on the left side, so we get 4.3 volts equals 7.5 kilo ohms times IB plus, we know beta was given to be 200, so 201 times 1 kilo ohm times IB. Now we can solve for IB. Let's flip the left hand and right hand sides across each other and uh, factor out IB. So it'd be IB times 7.5 kilo ohms plus 201 times 1 kilo ohm will equal the voltage of 4.3 volts. Dividing this all by 7.5 kilo ohms plus 201 times 1 kilo ohm, you get your base current of 20.624 microamps. It's a very small current, which makes sense because if you want a larger current on the output, or IE or IC, you want to multiply that effectively by beta, which was 200. So we can check that out in our heads that that makes sense. However, for the small signal model, we need to find other variables which require IC. And IC, as I said before, simply equals beta IB, which equals 200 times what we just found, 20.624 microamps, or E negative 6 amps if you want. IC equals 4.125 milliamps. That is everything we need to know for the small signal model. Now, transconductance GM equals IC over VT, which we just found to be 4.125 E negative 3 amps over thermal voltage of 26 millivolts. And this equals 0 0.1587 Siemen, or inverse ohm or mo, whatever you want to call it. We still need RO and R pi. We know that R pi equals thermal voltage over IB, which is again 26 millivolts over 20. 0.624 microamps or E negative 6 amps. And this gives you 1260 ohms or 1.26 kilo ohms. I'll change it eventually. Finally, RO is early voltage VA over IC. In the problem parameters, we are given VA is 100 volts over. 4.125 milliamps or E negative 3 amps. RO is then evaluated to be 24.24 kilo ohms. We are now ready to construct our AC equivalent circuit. With some space cleared up, we can now observe AC conditions in which capacitors short. Looking on the left hand side here, we see this capacitor short, so now we have to consider the voltage signal and the source resistance, and we also have to neglect the 1 kilo ohm resistor in the emitter. Let's construct the equivalent model now. On the left hand side, we have our voltage signal. Directly attached, we have our source resistance, RS equals 2 kilo ohms. Again, in series with that, we have our R thevenin that we've calculated, which will represent the 30K and 10K in parallel. We found it to be 7.5 kilo ohms. And in parallel with that, we have our R pi, 
looking into the left hand side of the BJT, we evaluated it to be equal to 1.26 kilo ohms. Moving on to the right hand side, we have our dependent current source, GMV pi, which you should always have for these types of problems. In parallel to that, we have our RO looking out from the collector, which we found to be equivalent to 24.24 kilo ohms. I'll just leave it as K since I have no space. And in parallel to that, we have our collector resistor, which was RC equals three kilo ohms. I'll keep that as K as well. And finally, we have our load resistor that we have to keep into account. Let's just uh, connect all of these since these are all connected and effectively grounded. RL equals three kilo ohms. I'm looking over here, this one. Now it's time to find the amplification of the circuit. So first we have to consider RN. Looking after RS, we have these two resistors, R7 and R pi in parallel. Again, always neglect RS when you're evaluating a basic RN formula. And over here, looking from the right, we have R out. Again, same idea, neglect RL unless otherwise specified. We have RN equal to, as I said, R7 in parallel with R pi, which is the same thing as 7.5 kilo ohms in parallel with 1.26 kilo ohms. Putting this in the calculator, you get 1.079 kilo ohms. You can round that if you want. I'm just trying to be a little more explicit. Let's box that out. And now you have R out equal to R O in parallel with R C. Which equals 24.24 kilo ohms in parallel with 3 kilo ohms. Calculator says that's about 2.7 kilo ohms. So using both these formulas, we can evaluate AV0 or the initial amplification, neglecting any outside or inside interferences, such as the source and load. We have AV0 equals negative GM R out. Again, this is the formula for amplification of a common emitter amplifier. If it's degeneration, you use slightly different numbers, but we don't have to worry about that. It's negative 0 0.1587 semen times what we just found to be 2.7 kilo ohms. This product equals negative 428.49 volts per volt. And of course, in real life, you would not see this because we have our load and source attached. Now looking at the bigger picture, where we include outside interference, we have R out prime, which is essentially the same thing as R out, except you're putting R L in parallel. which equals 2.7 kilo ohms in parallel with three kilo ohms. R out prime then equals 1.42 kilo ohms. Using this, we can now find our AV zero prime, which we will eventually use for AV to be negative again, GM, R out. But now we attach the little prime here, which equals negative 0 0.1587 semen times our new product of 1.42 kilo ohms. And this will give you a much smaller amplification of negative 225.35 volts per volt. Again, take the fact that I used AV naught with the grain of salt. Some textbooks flip it around or denote it with different variables. But now we have what we need to calculate the final amplification, AV, I'll put it up here, equals the voltage division across RS and this parallel resistor here, since 
what's actually being amplified is this point over here. We see that this uh, dependent current is GMV pi and R pi is over here. So that's why we need to take these in parallel. We'll call that R in over R in plus R s. This is the exact same thing again as taking a voltage division across R in times the amplification AV naught prime. And this will give you your final result. So let me clear out a little bit of space before we do this final calculation. So AV using this formula above equals RN, which we found to be 1.079 kilo ohms over that same number plus our source resistance of two kilo ohms, all times AV naught prime of negative 225.35 volts per volt. With unit cancellation, this should again give you volts per volt of negative 78.97 volts per volt. Rounding that up, we get negative 79 volts per volt. And that is our final answer for this entire circuit. This process is a little bit longer than our previous one because this degeneration added an extra step, plus we had another bias resistor. So hopefully you're getting a good idea of how this process works. I'll put out a couple more videos on these types of problems in the future, and until then, good luck.